And in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 3 to 4, it says, You therefore must endure hardships as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Because no one engaged in warfare entangles, someone say entangles, himself with the affairs of this life that he may please him who has enlisted him as a soldier. Father, we thank you for your presence. We pray that you would bless the preaching of your word, that your word would do what it has been sent out to do, that you would change minds, change hearts, bring a transformation today, God. We pray for your power to deliver, to set free, that people would walk here with victory, with peace. God, that you would restore broken pieces. Lord, we thank you and we love you in Jesus' precious name. And we all say, amen, amen. You can go in and take your seats. And I want to speak to you on a message entitled, Fight to Finish. And I know that we've been in a series uh, called uh, Winning the Will to Win. But how many know in order to, you know, the reason why we're winning is because we want to finish. We want to finish. You know, for those of you that are Marines, you're going to recognize this term, Semper Fidelis. It's Latin, and it's the motto of the United States Marine Corps. And it means always faithful. It is often shortened as Semper Fi. And it guides Marines to remain faithful to the mission at hand. Not only to the mission, but to one another, to the Marine Corps, to country, no matter what. See, no matter what, that is the heart of Semper Fidelis, faithful to the mission, no matter what. Turn your neighbor say, no matter what. You may remember that the Marines also had a recruiting campaign, and their slogan was, we are just looking for a few good men. And how many know that we are still looking for a few good people? What they meant by a few good men was that they were looking for the kind of men who would always be faithful to the mission no matter what. The reason this model calls for such an unflinching commitment and devotion is because the mission of protecting the country is a big deal. You see, we want the freedom in America. How many enjoy the freedom in America? Huh? That that we have freedom of religion. You see, and it's going to be here for future generations, but it has to be protected. Therefore, we need servicemen and women who will always be faithful to the mission of protecting our freedom no matter what. So if our country is precious, listen to me. Therefore, and and, and it's worth protecting, right? And it's worth enlisting top-notch men and women who will always be faithful to protecting it and preserving our freedom, then surely, how many know that the gospel, which is infinitely of greater value to our eternal destiny and spiritual freedom, is also worth protecting? Can I hear the church say amen? Therefore, you and I need to take the task of entrusting it to faithful disciples who will be able to pass it on for future generations. And you know, as Paul neared his life, we see here that he, he, he's there in a Roman prison and he takes steps to ensure that Timothy is going to remain a good soldier. You see, the point of a good soldier is that he is in active service. And how many know it's not a 9 to 5 job, but it is 24-7. Come on, somebody. You see, he took time to write young Timothy about becoming a good soldier. And it is that thought that I would like to consider this morning as we think together about the five qualities of a good soldier. The first one is that he is faithful. Turn and never say, are you faithful? You, therefore, must endure hardships as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. What does the word endurance mean? It means the ability to withstand. It means to, uh, 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 to withstand hardship and adversity. The ability to sustain, right, harsh activity. So how do we do that? What is endurance? It means to be patient when you're going through it. In other words, that enduring enduring hardship means do not quit. Do not give in. Be patient. Can I hear you say amen? 
Be patient because a good soldier realizes that there's going to be trouble. In other words, you got to expect trouble. If you didn't know that there's going to be trouble, I'm letting you know now there's going to be trouble. But nevertheless, do not be discouraged because you have a greater purpose, a greater mission. You see, and you understand as a good soldier that there's going to be pain, pressure, and problems. But I'm here to tell you that God will carry you through. I'm telling you, we've been through some things this year, even a few years ago. But how many know how, that God has sustained us and that God has carried us, that if he did it for us one time, he can do it again? You see, be encouraged when, tr- when hardship comes. Because in Isaiah, it talks about it, that God never faints nor is weary. And God gives power to the weak. Have you ever felt weak, my friend? I'm here to tell you that in your weakness, God's strength is made perfect. You see, he gives strength to those who have no might. He increases them. Even the young people, come on somebody, shall faint and grow weary. But young men shall utterly fall. But those who wait upon the Lord, come on, he shall renew your strength. You shall mount up with wings like eagles that they shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. That's a promise from God when you're going through trouble. That is a promise from God that God is going to carry you through. That in time you keep doing what God has called you to do. You disciple. You continue to grow. You continue to pray. My friend, and God is on the way. Can I hear you say amen? Look at John 16, 33. But be of good cheer because I have overcome the world. These are the promises of the word of God. You see... We have to run with endurance. We have to serve with endurance. We have to live with endurance. And the last thing, we got to fight. Come on, somebody. We have to fight with endurance. Do not swerve from your deliberate purpose. Do not swerve. Do not let it push you out of the box. You see, because we have even a greater purpose. And you know what that is? To please our commanding officer, which is Jesus Christ. You know, and that's something that we have to get an illumination of inside of our spirit. You know what I tell when when, when people come to me and they're struggling? You know what I tell, man? Just please God. Because if you just please God, keep the simplicity of the gospel, my friend. We're, we're, we're not here to give you large formulas and X plus Y plus C plus this. No, 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 no. The thing is, just please the Lord. Do what's going to put a smile upon God's face. Please your commanding officer in every area of your life, in your relationships. Come on, somebody. In the area of giving your time, your talent, your treasure, whatever it is. Can I hear you say Amen. Please, your commanding officer. And how do we do that? By the way we live out our life. In in everything that you do, how do we become faithful? We have to give our all and do it with the spirit of excellence. We have to do a good job to whatever task is given to us and to do it with all of our heart. You know, I learned a long time ago, whether I was, whatever I was doing a small or great in people's eyes, I did it with all my heart because I wanted to be faithful. And if God put me at a post, come on somebody, then I was going to be faithful to that post. I was going to be on time. If I said I was going to be there, then I'm going to be there. Can I hear you say amen? Why? Because I want to please my commanding officer. If you walk worthy of God, look at this in Colossians 1.10. It says that you may live a life worthy of the Lord and please him in every way, bearing fruit in every good work. What's the second thing? Not only is he faithful, but secondly, he is free. He is free free second timothy chapter 2 verses 4 no one engaged in warfare entangles himself with the affairs of this life the word entangle in the greek means implico turn your name and say implico and this is described as a runner who has garments but he's trying to run and he gets tangled up in his garments this also describes a person, a, a sheep whose wool gets caught in thorns. In other words, it means this. 
to become involved in an activity to the point of interfering with other activities in your life. What things are you entangled with this morning? You see, by using this word, Paul tells us that as committed Christians, we do not have the privilege of getting too involved or intertwined with matters that are relatively unimportant in the light of eternity. What things are you tangled up with this morning? What things have got you from, st from, from to, to stop you from running the race? What things have tripped you up? You see, the implico. Turn to your neighbor and say, implico. See, a good soldier is free from entanglement. But what causes entanglement, you guys ready for this? It's called compromise. Compromise is a combination of conflicting values and practices and principles that bring about God's disapproval. You see, Lance Armstrong was a superstar. And he reached the pinnacle of his sport only to be taken down by using performance enhancing drugs he compromised his integrity of the person that everybody thought he was and also the sport of cycling listen to what someone said about Lance there is no excuse for such behavior only a rationalization such as everyone else does it so I'm going to do it or a moral blindness in the sense that Lance thought he could get away with compromising the rules of the sport. Instead of going down as a champion, he's going to go down as a compromiser. You know, and today in the Lord's Army, there are many in the Army who are pretending to be soldiers because they look like soldiers, they dress like soldiers, they march like soldiers, they even act like soldiers, but they're not living the full convictions of being a soldier, a good soldier of God. Can I hear you say amen? Now I have compassion because, they, because some of them are hiding sin. But worse than that, others are even hiding someone else's sin. Just let that soak for a minute. Compromise is crippling. And you could look like you're winning, but you're really losing. When you compromise and you cover up sin, let me give you a few things that happens. You know, when, when, I'm, when, when I'm sitting there and I'm talking to a person, you know what I begin to share is, listen, tell me the truth. Not because you're on judgment. Not because you're on trial. So that you can be set free. Can I hear you say amen? See, because when you cover up, when you cover up sin, right, you have no power and no strength. There is no breakthrough. You're dry. There's no joy. There's no victory. You struggle. Look what Psalms 32 verses 3 and 4. Write this down. When I refuse to confess my sin... My body wasted away and I groaned all day long. Day and night, your hand of discipline was heavy on me. Listen to this. That my strength evaporated like water in the summer. When that happens, you lose the will to win. But more than ever, it takes away your fight. See, this is serious stuff that we're involved in. Can I hear you say amen? Amen. A person with unconfessed sin is like arrow without no head. It's like a sword that has no edges. It's an arrow that cannot pierce or a sword without its cutting edge. Unconfessed sins brings cold prayers. And cold prayers always freeze up before they reach heaven. Why did I bring this out? So you can be free from entanglement. So you can be free. So you can walk in power. So you can walk in dignity. So you can walk with strength. Come on, somebody. So you can walk with energy. So you can walk with a new pep in your step. Come on. Because we need to get people free this morning. And to quit covering up. Because when you cover up, there's a guilt. There's a shame that comes up. There's a heavy burden that's laid upon you. But how many know that when you confess, you could be healed? Come on, somebody. When you confess.
confess, you can have mercy. When you confess, you can have grace. When you confess, the power of God comes. Come on, somebody. There's been times in my life where I struggled. And I remember a few times when I was real young in the Lord back in 1995. I remember. And I said, look, man, I, I can't deal with this. I'm talking to myself. You ever talk to yourself? Huh? I said, man, I can't, I, I can't keep serving God like this. I cannot, man, keep doing, man, this is not right. I'm not pleasing God. I'm not being a good soldier. So you know what I did? I told on myself. How many know that there's no more rats in the kingdom of God? There's no more tattletales in the kingdom of God. You know what I did? I went to a pastor in my church, and I said, man, I am struggling. I am messed up. I am in sin. Come on, somebody. And you know what the pastor told me? He didn't judge me. He didn't criticize me. He looked with eyes of compassion, and he said, I'm going to pray for you, brother. I'm going to fast for you, brother. I'm going to go ahead and team up with you in prayer so that God, so that you can overcome this temptation in your life. And that's why, that's what I attribute. Can I hear you say amen? That's what I attribute myself to staying this long to serving God is I've learned to be accountable with the struggles and the sins and, and those things that try to keep secret in my life. And because I've been open and because I've shared, my friend, I have not been the same since. Come on, somebody. I walk with power. I walk with dignity. My prayers are answered. There is victory in my life. I have joy unspeakable and full of glory. Can how you say amen you see and that's what we have to remember that's why peter says therefore humble yourselves under the mighty hand of god and he will exalt you in proper time. In other words, that you're going to walk in victory again. You're going to get your will to fight. And more than that, you're going to get your will to win. Can I you say amen? Not only is he faithful and he's free, but he's familiar. These are some things that a good soldier knows. He is familiar with the sound of his commander's voice. I like John 10. It says, that And when he brings out the sheep, he goes before them, and the sheep follow him. Someone say, follow him, for they know his voice. By no means will they follow a stranger, but they will flee from him, for they do not know the voice of a stranger. See, do you know the voice of your commanding officer? I remember throughout my life, you know, when, when God was directing my life when I was real young in the Lord, what did God call me to do? What did God want for my life? I was faithful. I kept serving. I kept doing everything that was asked of me. But how many know that when you know your shepherd's voice, you're going to be able to hear from God and you're going to get the direction that you need. And I remember that it was a very important time of my life. And I heard a lot of other voices. I heard a lot of other things that wanted to take me over here and take me over there. You know, promising things, real good things. You see, but I can't go by the good things that I hear. Come on, somebody. I can't go by what everybody else thinks. I can't go with what I feel inside or the emotion. Can I hear you say amen? No, but it was at that time where I began to pray, where I began to fast, where I began to look from, for, for confirmation. Can I hear you say amen on the direction that God was giving me? And as a good soldier, you have to know your commander's voice. Can I hear you say amen? So that you can be directed. And because of it, I was able to answer the call of God to full-time ministry. Come on and give the Lord a great big hand of praise. <coughs> and you need to know your commander's voice when it comes time to your personal life. When it comes time to finding a spouse. Come on, somebody. Right? Your commander's voice, it says that, right? That, 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 that a man should go after a woman. Right? Or no, no. Yeah, right? can't remember what's that scripture i got lost i had a a moment uh what's that scripture he who finds a wife finds a good thing right he who finds a wife finds a good thing you see and so what am i telling you is that you need to hear god's direction for your life you know in tra times of transition can I hear you say amen? You need to hear the Lord's direction for your life. You're coming back from the UTC or graduating the home or going to a decide. How many know that we need to hear God's direction for our lives? So he's familiar, but he's also familiar with his weapons of warfare. 
And listen, I'm here to tell you, master worship. Can I hear you say amen? Because sometimes when you're down and sometimes when you can't pray, all you got to do is turn on the YouTube. Come on, somebody. Put on new wine and begin to lift your hands and begin to break in the presence of God. Because sometimes you got to worship your way out. Sometimes you got to come on, somebody. You got to offer up a sacrifice of praise. You got to know the skills of using your weapon. You got to be proficient. You know, no soldier goes to war without learning first how to use his weapons. Can I hear you say amen? Huh? You see, and we got some powerful weapons. We got the breastplate of righteousness. Walking in the righteousness of God. Walking the word of God. That protects us. How many know that's power? I was telling some guys the other day, when you walk in holiness, how many know you walk in power? Come on, somebody. Huh? You have the sword of the spirit, the word of God. So when those lies from the enemy comes in and tries to discourage you and tell you everything that you're not. How many of those, you can get the word of God and tell you everything that God thinks about you. That God says that you can do. What the enemy says you can't do. You know your weapons. You know, and one of the weapons I like, you know, you may think, well, I like the sword. I like the shield, man. Cool. You know, you get to, you know, lift up your shield of faith and block the fiery darts. You know which ones I like? I like the spikes. You know, shod my feet with the gospel of peace. You know why? How many ever seen Gladiator? Huh? You ever see, like, like they have their shields, but you see the, 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 the crazy Vikings, right? They, ah, right? And, and they run towards the Romans. But the Romans are spiked in. And, you know, and then they come and they crash against their shields. But how many know the Roman soldiers doesn't move? You want me to tell you why? Because their, their boots were actually made of leather and metal. They had a big piece of metal all the way up covering their knee with straps to hold the metal in place. And on the bottom of their shoe, they had spikes. They had spikes. And these spikes were about three inches long. And they had two spikes in the front. So when that enemy came in, and try to rush them, they were planted, they were stationary, they were not going to move. They mastered the art of their shoes. And let me tell you something, that when the enemy came, you know what began to happen when the enemy came? These Roman soldiers, when they would use the sword, what happens is they would fall and the, and the enemy would still be alive. They would kick the enemy with their boots, with the two spikes, to finish him off. Come on, somebody. Huh? I'm looking at this thing spiritually. Come on, somebody. I want to make sure those three enemies are ain't going to come back. Huh? You see? And what happened is that they would step on them and crush them with the spikes. And I know that sounds gory, but think about it spiritually. There's some things I want to attack your life. There's some things I want to stop you from going forward. And you got to get the word of God and shod your feet with the prep with the gospel of peace. In other words, you are not going to move. Devil, you may come and try to push me out. You may come and try to tell me lies and make me walk out of the house of God and change this and go over here and go back to the club. But no, I'm going to plant my Self right here on this battlefield and I am not moving because I am defending my house I am defending my heart I am defending my home I am defending my children I'm not moving I'm not going you know and the, and the other part of it is a sword you know that the enemy would actually shiver in their boots when the Roman pulled out the sword because, you know, at the end of it, there was a big old piece of metal so that they can pound. But then also at the tip of their sword, it wasn't like an ordinary sword. It actually had like a, like a corkscrew at the end of it. So when they would hit their enemies, they would go in, but then they would pull out everything. So the enemy was afraid of the Roman soldier. I don't know about you, but I wouldn't want to get hit by that. But think about this. Look how powerful the word of God is. It brings fear to your enemies. It brings fear to those things that are attacking. Come on, somebody. Give the Lord a great big hand of praise. But then you got to know the strategy of the enemy. 
Be sober. Be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, walks around like a roaring lion. So how many know he's around? And he's looking for opportunity. He's walking. He's walking around, seeking. Come on, somebody who's going to be caught slipping. Remember that? Was that an 80s thing? <laughs> caught slipping? Don't be caught slipping. Don't put yourself in a place where you become vulnerable to the enemy. Don't put yourself in a place. Know that he is after you. Know that he's going to cater to you the appetites that you have. Know that he's going to draw you away with temptation. You know, that's why you got to tell on yourself. Come on, somebody, about your weaknesses. Because the strategy of the enemy. And no wonder Satan will even transform himself into an angel of light. Sometimes you think it's God's open door, but it's Satan's revolving door. And you have to know the difference. That's why it's important to be familiar with the commander's voice. Come on and give the Lord a great big hand of praise. But also, it says here that even in the midst of that, that I will never leave you nor forsake you. And God will always make an escape for you and I when the enemy tries to tempt us. Amen? You see, what's the fourth thing is that he's a fighter. I have fought the good fight and I have finished the race. Listen, this thing is not just about a bless me club. How many know it's a battlefield? Turn your number say it's a battlefield. You know, and I know we like to hear sometimes the good things of the word, but how many know it's going to be a battlefield? And that's why we got to equip ourselves. We got to equip ourselves. You see, a fighter, number one, is determined. He's determined. You say to say, you know what? I am not going to retreat in the face of the enemy. He does not run from a fight. Instead, he stands his ground and he fights the battle until the battle is over. That's why I like it. 1 Samuel 14, it says, And Jonathan said to his young men who bore his armor, Come and let us go up. In other words, I'm not going to attack. I'm not going to let the enemy come and attack me. I'm going to go and attack the enemy. I was always taught in the house of God not to be on the defensive, but to be on the offense. You see, because the Bible says here that it may be that the Lord will, will work for us. For nothing restrains the Lord from saving by many or by few. So the armor bearer said to him, do all that is in your heart. I am with you. You see, understand this, that if you have that type of determination, how many know it's hard to take you out? When you have a determination not just to survive, but to win. Come on, somebody. When you have a determination in your heart to finish, and I'm going to finish this thing. Can you say amen? You are not going to surrender. You are not going to quit until the battle's over. Why? Because you're driven. The good soldier realizes that the battle does not run according to his time frame. But my friend, you have to know that there is another that's in charge of the duration of the battle. But our job, my friend, is to finish that fight. Can I you say amen? Fight to the finish. How many here are ready to fight to the finish? And he is driven because he is dedicated. You see, and our heart of dedication will always be tested. He keeps his oath to God. And says, man, God, you saved me. And I want to be a good soldier. And I'm determined to live out my life for you regardless of the personal cost. You say, and I say that with humbleness. And I say that with humility. Because I am not going to stay here and say that it is the easiest thing. Things happen. But I have to go through the grace of God, through the power of prayer, to my belief in the word of God, that God is going to sustain me no matter what happens. Can I hear you say, say amen, my friend. I want to stay dedicated to the Lord. I want to keep my faith. I want to keep living out the word of God. I want to keep sharing it, defending it at all times, no matter what. You see, being a good soldier is something that starts in the heart. And I believe that if you determine today inside of your heart that you're not going to let nothing stop you, I really believe that you're going to be a good soldier. Can I you say amen? Because not only is he faithful, not only is he free, 
Not only is he familiar, but he's also a fighter. As Matt comes, he is, and number five, a finisher. Second Timothy chapter four, verse seven and eight. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. You see, fought, finish, and faith. You see, you and I have to come in with that same type of mentality. That I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. But now there is in store for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day. Not only to me, but also to all those who will long for his appearing. He is a finisher, and I'll tell you why. Because he's already resolved in his heart. Resolved in his heart that he's in it for the long haul. Have you resolved this in your heart that this is not going to be a seasonal thing? Have you resolved in your heart that this is not going to be a temporary thing? But how many know this is lifelong? This is lifelong. This is something that, that is not a short sprint. But how many know this is a long distance marathon? This is something that you and I have to resolve in our heart. That nothing, when you resolve this in your heart, you begin to say, man, God, there's a brokenness inside of you. And you say, man, God, I don't want to let go. I'm not going to let go. I'm not going to quit. I may feel weak carrying my sword, but you know what? I have resolved in my heart. I'm in this for the long haul. I'm going to believe, God, that you're going to strengthen me, that you're going to give me a second wind. God, that you're going to breathe upon me, God, so that I can get up again, so I can fight again. Come on, so I can stand again. He's resolved in his heart. Come on, somebody, that he's going to stand no matter what. But he stands because he has reason to. And he's going to endure hardships. He's going to follow his commanding officer selflessly. The good soldier knows that there was a price that was paid by his commanding officer. Another thing that goes through my mind is, Jesus, you paid a price. I'm going to pay a price too. Because that's the example that you set. And I want to be a good soldier, not only because I resolved, because the soldier resolved in his heart, had reason, but also how many know that there's a reward? Turn to your neighbor and say, there's a reward. The good soldier finishes his course because he knows at the end of war, every deed will be rewarded by the commander in chief. What am I telling you here? Finish. Fight to finish. You know why? Because you have a reward waiting for you. It's worth it at the end. It's worth it at the end. What I need you to pray for this morning, and I make this altar call with you, is pray that God will give you an eternal lens. Pray that you would see through an eternal lens. That your decisions matter because destiny, because your destiny is made by your decisions. Look with the eyes of eternity, young people. We don't have forever to live. Those of us that have unconfessed sin, those of us that are covering up things, listen, it's time to stop. God wants to give you power. They want this breakthrough. But if you're covering up things, you're hiding things, there's no power. But there's a reward. Come on, somebody. Someone say, there's a reward. If we can all stand this morning. The Bible says this in 1 John. That there's going to be those that come to him in shame. And there's going to be those that come to him confidently. How many want to hear those good words? Well done, thy good and thy faithful servant enter into rest when you have an eternal lens and you picture yourself standing before the Lord how many know it changes the perspective and the trajectory of your life 
Look within eternal lens and every head bowed and every eye closed.